Okay, today I'm going to tie a nymph. It's going to be a braided nymph. Don't let that scare you. Braiding is actually very simple. What I'm going to use here for a hook is a 200R Tiemco. I have a tungsten bead on and I'm using a black thread. What I'll do is I'll wind the thread all the way to the back. For the tail, I'm going to use pheasant. It's going to be a short tail, but a kind of a you see if I got a five or six strands. It's not a long tail, I'll show you. I'm just going to pull for length. Going to run my thread back up to I leave about a just about a third of the shank. The body will be on the back portion and then we'll do the thorax and the wings. Now for the body I'm going to be using a vinyl rib. And it's a nymph size, so it's small, and I'm going to be using two colors. This one is considered a brown. I would call it a light tan, but it is a brown nymph. You tie that on one side of the shank. For the other one I'm using, the other color is going to be green. Now the green will be the top and the brown will be the bottom of the nymph. The reason I'm tying it on the side is just to give it a little width. It's not going to add much but it's going to be enough. right back to where you tied your tail. Now, I'm going to be putting one strand of ostrich. It's a dyed ostrich and it's a light brown. Run my thread up, give myself a half hitch because I'm using a rotary vise. All right. I'm just going to put on the ostrich. Now, I should add that this ostrich is a, it's an option. You don't have to put it on. Now, the reason I'm doing it is to make it look buggy with hair sticking out in between the ribs. Okay. Cut that off. Now you're going to tie off 
your thread and cut it off as well. When we braid this body, you'll be able to let the strands go and not lose it. It'll be, you'll see, tighten right up in there on its own. Now, this is a very easy process. And you do the same thing on every turn. We're going to tie a knot underneath. Now, the green is going to be the top, the brown is going to be the bottom. So therefore, every time, without any exceptions, the brown goes in front of the green and you make yourself a knot, like so. Then you take the green from the knot, take the green and put it over the shank, like so, and snug it up. Repeat this, brown over the green underneath, and make a knot. like that and put the green strand on top and snug it up just repeat that brown over the green again We'll keep doing that until we get to where we want to go. You can see the hurl is giving us a little hairy look next on our ribbing. Yellow in front, or the brown in front of the green again, over and over again. So you can see it's not really a difficult job. Those of you who have all your fingers, we're going to find this a lot easier. So if I can do it, anybody can do it. One more should do it, I think. I'm 
I'm liking the looks of that already. Okay. <laughs> Going to put the tie my thread back on. Now we're going to tie them off nice and close, like so. There we go. Now, we're going to tie in our wings. What I'm going to use for the wing material is called medallion sheeting. It's a see-through product, translucent. Something like Swiss straw or Raphael, what do they call that? Uh, Swiss straw, it uh, gets too translucent in the water. This is, I find, much better. Tie in one wing. Trim it and always trim it so that the long portion is at the bottom at an angle. Like so. Now I'm going to tie in the shell back. Like so. So you can see what we've done here. I put a shell back on there. Okay. Now, we're going to put the feelers on at this stage. And what I've done, is I've taken two feathers from this small cape. I stripped the barbells off. And what I'm left with is the stem, or the center portion of the feather. I've taken a black marker and marked on the stem. Now I'm going to tie this in on each side. Gonna try to get that to so it curls inward. There we go. I like that. I have a 
another one prepared here. Now, we need legs. Now, for the legs, I'm going to use Hungarian partridge. I'll select a short feather. To prepare that, strip it back on both sides. And then I'll do a process of what's called a tree. I'll tree it. Pull it back like that. Turn it upside down and I'm going to tie it in by the tip. off I'll stack some thread in there keep the bead head right up against the eye all right now I'm going to take Hurl. This is uh, peacock hurl. I'll tie in two strands. Trim the bottom off. I put her on I always wrap around my thread gives me a little strength get the legs folded back out of the road That is going to finish off our thorax. Tie in the legs, making sure it's in the center like so. Now, take your shell back. tie that down it's going to fold the legs down as you can see now I take what's left of the shell back 
and I fold that back. When you whip finish, it'll stack the thread from the thorax right to the bead head, like so. Now, you take your feelers and we're going to trim for the length about that long and that is your braided nymph makes a beautiful caddis nymph as you can see it's not too bushy if it is you can just take your scissors and trim it But that is a finished braided nymph. You won't mind fishing that anytime.